In this video, we'll go over all the fundamentals that make up your financial health, and we're starting right now. Hey guys, Elliot here. So the new year always comes with new year resolutions. And while I can't help you if you're looking to hit the gym and lose a few pounds, there are other channels for that. I can help you on the financial side of things. Everyone wants to do better with their money, but let's face it, we all have limited time and resources, and the world of finance is a pretty big one. So what should you focus on? Well, let's take a closer look at what exactly makes up your financial health. And as always, if you enjoy this video and find it useful, please do consider subscribing to this channel and don't forget to smash that like button. So as a financial advisor and educator, I consider the four main items that make up your financial health to be one, reducing your debt, two, establishing savings, three, investing your money, and four, protecting your money. If all four of these are in harmony, so to speak, your financial health is excellent. And if one or two are missing or underdeveloped, well, you could use a bit of a financial tune-up. As I go through these, compare what I described to your own situation and see what, if anything, needs attention. So the very first item is reducing debt. This in turn means avoiding getting into debt and paying back debt that you already have. So what kind of debt do most of us have? Well, it's typically mortgage, auto loan, student debt, and especially now after the holidays, credit card debt. And some people may also have medical and tax debt on top of that. My advice for avoiding debt has always been very timeless, boring, bread and butter type of stuff, all focused on living below your means. But it's the new year, so let's focus on getting rid of debt that you already have. And for that, there are four very effective ways that can be used. The first method is called debt stacking or debt avalanche. With this method, you will rack and stack all your non-mortgage debts according to the interest rate they charge, from highest to lowest. The order of payoff is then in the order of the descending interest rate, regardless of the actual amount. The advantage to this method is that by tackling the highest interest rate debt first, you'll save a lot of money over the long haul. The second method is called debt snowball. Here you will rack and stack all of your non-mortgage debts according to the amounts, but with the smallest amount first. The advantage to this method is purely psychological. You will eliminate the smallest of the debts fairly quickly and feel like you're making progress, which will motivate you to keep going more than ever. The third method is called balance transfer, and this mostly applies to just credit cards. The idea here is to open up a new credit card that has a significantly lower interest rate than your current one, or even a zero promotional rate, and transfer your existing credit card balance to that card, and essentially you have a certain amount of time, 6 to 12 months, to pay off your debt interest free. The fourth and final method is the consolidation loan. If you have a good credit, you can take out a consolidation loan from a bank or a credit union that will combine all your non-mortgage debts into one loan. This is especially good in the time of low interest rates such as right now and is a good idea if you have several credit cards that you'd like to consolidate. So that was just a brief overview of debt payoff but if you want more details check out this video's description right below and there's a link there to another video of mine called four proven ways to pay off debt faster and there I'll go into more details and show some examples. But what about savings? So that's the second part of your financial health and there are two things to talk about here. The first is to actually establish rainy day emergency savings and the second part is budgeting and spending. Let's first discuss the savings part. It's critical that you have a rainy day emergency fund in case of an unexpected expense such as a car repair or you lose your job. So if you don't have this make a new year's resolution that in 2022 you will establish this rainy day fund and put away at least 10% of your income monthly. Now additionally there are two important savings tools to discuss here because you should not be keeping cash under your mat or in a savings account for that matter because the interest rates are so low right now. It's much better to keep emergency savings in a money market account or an MMA. These are savings accounts that pay a substantially higher interest rate and while it's still not a lot because of this low interest rate environment, it's a lot better than regular bank savings. There are dozens of MMA accounts out there from a variety of online banks and they're all FDIC insured. So if you don't have one open, go online, do a little bit of research, find one that appeals to you and open up the account and put all your savings into there. Another important savings tool is a certificate of deposit or 
or CD. They pay roughly similar or slightly higher rates than money market accounts do and are also a much better option than a bank savings account or keeping your money in cash. If you want to learn more about MMAs and CDs, there are links in the description below to two videos of mine that will go into much more detail on both topics. Okay, so now what about budgeting and spending? If you haven't done this yet, make 2022 the year where you're going to create a household budget and stick to it. It's good to go through your entire set of expenses top to bottom to see where you can save and where you're clearly overpaying. What is typical you ask? Well, here are some numbers that financial planners typically recommend. Housing should be no more than 30% of your gross or pre-tax monthly income. Transportation should be no more than 15% of your net or post-tax monthly income. Food and personal items should be no more than 25% of your net or post-tax income. Clothing should be no more than 5% of your net or post-tax income. And finally, entertainment and recreation should be no more than 5 to 10% of your net or post-tax income. Here's a trick that I use, it's called zero-based budgeting. And all that simply means is that I assign all of my income a specific purpose. For example, bills, saving, investing, or whatever it may be. And I keep doing this until I reach zero. That way, none of my money is just sitting around aimlessly. Now, that doesn't mean you don't allow yourself spending money. You certainly can. It just means that it's accounted for and there are no unaccounted for funds in your income stream. There is software out there that can help you with budgeting. And some examples include Quicken, Mint, You Need a Budget, personal capital and ace money light among others although with me the software that gets the most use is plain old microsoft excel if you want to learn more about effective budgeting i do have two videos on this and the links are in the description right below Okay, finally we come to the third part of your financial health and that is investing. Why is this important? Well, the short answer is that investing is the only way you can grow money that you already have in order to achieve goals such as retirement or a major purchase down the road. Now obviously this is a huge topic and I dedicate a good chunk of my channel to investing alone, but what are the fundamentals that you should be considering if you haven't really invested before? Well, here's what I tell folks in my financial seminars. First and foremost, take advantage of any investing opportunities you may already have through your employer's retirement plans, such as 401k or IRA. Your work may also have a 403b or a 457b instead of a 401k, but these are quite similar in nature. If you are investing in any of these already, then next consider investing outside of your employer. The best advice for investing on your own outside of your employer is to start with index funds. These are hands-off passive investments that track a stock market index and are very low cost and give solid returns consistent with the overall stock market when taken over the long haul. You can also invest in managed mutual funds, but here you must do some research to pick the best performance and lowest expense ratios and fees, so an index fund is the best place to start. A significant chunk of my portfolio is in an S&P 500 index fund, so this is advice I follow myself and any advisor would recommend index funds, as really this is the most fundamental way to begin investing. Once you're regularly putting money away into a 401k or an IRA and also an index fund, and you have some capital left over, you should consider investing in the broader market. And this can include stock picking and many other techniques that I talk about on this channel. If you want to learn more about 401ks, IRAs, and index funds, check out links in the description below to three videos that cover these topics in much more detail. Investing is a big part of your overall financial health, so if you haven't jumped into the market, make 2022 the year you will do so. Okay, the fourth and final part of your financial health has to do with protecting your hard-earned money and your overall estate. This is really where insurance, estate planning, and asset protection all come in. These are all major topics, but here's a brief overview. When it comes to insurance, most people do well when it comes to insuring their house or cars because in most cases this is required by law. However, life insurance is often overlooked because it is not in fact required, but it is a very good idea. Among the several credentials I hold is being a California licensed insurance agent, and I'm a big proponent of basic term life insurance. If you don't smoke and you're relatively young, or at least up to middle age, this type of insurance is very affordable. And 
and is a critical part of protecting your assets in case something happens to you. There is also permanent life insurance, but in most cases it's not needed as it is a lot more expensive, and permanent insurance is used more often as a financial tool for wealth management and tax purposes. If you're not covered and you have a mortgage and a family and dependents, I suggest you look into term life insurance in 2022. And if you want to learn more about life insurance in general, I have a link to an introductory video on this topic in the description below. Besides insurance, a big part of protecting your money is estate planning. This means creating a will, a trust, and a power of attorney in case you are unable to handle your affairs. This is another really good New Year's financial resolution. And if you haven't done this yet, at the very least, put together a will in the new year. It's fairly easy and fairly inexpensive. Trusts and power of attorneys are a little bit more involved and may involve going to an actual attorney, but having these will ensure that your assets are dealt with in accordance with your wishes. Finally, it's worth mentioning asset protection. This is a set of legal and financial strategies to protect your home, property, savings, and all the rest of your assets using numerous approaches such as insurance, statutory protection, protective entities, equity stripping, and domestic or offshore asset protection trusts or ATPs. The last few of these are not really do-it-yourself activities and you will need specialized attorneys. It is however worth taking a look at your personal and business assets and considering if you are at a risk of a lawsuit by virtue of your profession. If you're an attorney, doctor, financial advisor, or in another high-risk field, you can be sued, sometimes frivolously, and asset protection can potentially make a lot of sense. If you want to learn more about this fascinating topic, I have a video on it and the link is in the description below. Okay, so this was a really brief overview of the four aspects of financial health. Pay back debt and strive for zero money owed. Establish a rainy day emergency fund. Invest with fundamental approaches. And be sure you're adequately protected with insurance and other means. Hopefully this overview helped you assess where exactly you're at as we all start off the new year. And if there's anything you need to address to start off the year on the right foot. If you've enjoyed this video and found it useful, please do consider subscribing to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future financial investing videos just like this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys soon.